All right, we want to say greetings to everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and we're grateful to the Lord to be able to uh, come before you and share with you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share. All right, so we want to continue talking about what we started off talking about yesterday uh, concerning uh, admitting you're wrong, and I think that that's very important. I believe that every believer that call themselves a Christian should be willing to admit they're wrong, should be willing to, you know, to come before the Lord and, and to other people, whoever they may have wronged, and admit they're wrong. And I think a lot of times, you know, uh, what happens is people... The longer people hold on to that wrong, the harder it is for them to give it up because they they feel like they have to uh, defend it. They feel like they have to. Um, they they feel like well, I've already dug myself in this hole here, and so I'm not I'm not going to come out of it. Uh, especially when they have gathered an audience. Especially when you have opened your mouth and talked to people about what it is you feel like you were wronged in or what it is your uh, what whatever it is your opinion may be about something uh the, the the more people you've talked to about it the longer you've held on to it uh the harder it is for you to swallow your pride and uh to admit that you were wrong but i tell you you don't get anywhere in the lord and you won't get anywhere in the Lord. I, and I've run across people like that, that they could not stand being corrected. Could not stand being corrected. Now, of course, in the Bible, the Word of God tells us that when we as as so-called Christians cannot stand correction, you know, especially when it's godly correction, it makes us bastards. In other words, you, you're like a child without a father. And a father's job is to correct the child and whenever you refuse correction, you're refusing your father. You know, you're refusing your heavenly father. And so, and of course, now I don't want to hear anything about, uh, well, you know, when God correct me, then he'll correct me. And, you know, he don't, because some people try to get around men, you know. Well, God sends his ministers, his prophets to correct people. And you have to be able to receive that. You see that? You have to be able to receive that. Prophets, they speak directly from the mouth and the mind of God. And unfortunately, today, we have so many people that are just renegades. You know, we've even had people that have come to be a part of this ministry who sometimes they're not used to being under uh, the Word of God. And, and it boggles them. It bothers them when they uh, come here or when they become a part of this ministry and have to hear the Word of God often. You see that? And, and sometimes people feel like it's too much for them. Uh, but it's not too much. The Word of God, the you know, the Bible makes it clear. Now, what I have found <laughs> is that when people have a problem obeying and they just feel like the Word of God is too much and it's just, I don't understand it and, you know, all these kind of excuses that people come up with is usually because their relationship with God isn't where it need to be. It's not burdensome. The Bible makes it clear in the book of 1 John. Keeping the commandments of God are not burdensome. Jesus Christ said when he walked this earth, if you love me, keep my commandments. That, in other words, the proof of your love for Jesus Christ is the fact that you're willing to keep his commandment. That's your proof. So, but when you're sitting around complaining about how hard it is and I feel like it's just too much, it, it, what you're really saying is I don't have the love that it takes to keep his commandments. And so from there, offense sets in on people. From there, people get offended. Uh, from there, people then start coming up with their own doctrine, their own beliefs, belief system, and they run with it, you know. And <clears throat> when they do that, uh, it makes it hard for somebody to come along and share the truth with them. And they, you know, and when they do, then all of a sudden, you're the bad guy, you see. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the seventh chapter of the book of, um, uh, of the book of Acts. The seventh chapter of the book of Acts, and we're going to read a few things uh, just to make the point of what the Lord want to say here today of, of admitting.
admitting your wrong. Now, I believe, I sincerely believe, you know, in any relationship, when you have two individuals, regardless of the nature of that relationship, uh, sometimes people might rub each other the wrong way. And when that happens, uh, somebody need to admit that they were wrong. And other people, some people need to actually just get over however it was that they may, however it is that they may have felt that the offense have come. And so, when you have somebody that just can't see themselves, because I've dealt with these people up close and personal, people that just can't see themselves, they, it's always somebody else's fault. It's always, you know, and a lot of times with the, these kind of people, it's everybody else. You know, they don't, they won't get along with anybody because it's everybody else. You see that? And what I say, it won't get along with anybody for very long, you know, because it's everybody else. That is, the more you go down that road, uh, the more lonely you'll become, the more ostracized you'll become. Uh, and that's not God's will. You see that? That's not God's will. You have to surrender and submit yourself to the word of God so that you can be corrected. But to do that, you have to be willing to admit, well, maybe my belief system is off. Maybe this voice that I was hearing was not of God. And I can promise you, it's not if it's not according to God's word. You see that? Because God will never go against his word. So the seventh chapter of the book of Acts we're going to start reading at verse 51. Now, this is Stephen preaching. Now, Stephen was a deacon of the church, but also he was a minister. And the Bible says that God done many wonderful works by his hand. So he at first was a deacon, and then God uh, used him as a minister to preach his word and also to do miracles and wonders and things like that. And so at verse 51, he says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. And so we have a lot of people that's that way. They stiff-necked, they're uncircumcised in heart and ears. Now, what that means as far as heart and ears is they don't have the ears to hear what God has to say and don't have the understanding to receive it. Every, every time you say something to them, it gets misconstrued. You can be just preaching God's word and, and they're going to take it some kind of way and twist it. And I've even had people do that with me, uh, send me emails or comments or whatever, trying to use God's word and... I know that they're off. You see that? I know that they're off because you're off, you know. And so, but that filter, you know, that, that whole system, that, that, that twisted mind, the twisted heart, the heart that hasn't been healed, the heart that won't forgive, the heart that holds on to bitterness, it causes the ears to be dull. In other words, it causes the ears not to hear and it causes the heart not to receive the truth. And so here Stephen is just flat out telling them, and, and that's why I say, you know, even today, if you look back and see what these preachers were saying, there was a reason why they were being killed. You see, because some people, they want preachers to be fluffy. You know, they, they want preachers to just talk to them and be nice. And But God didn't call preachers to be nice to you. He called them to preach God's word and to tell you the truth about you. And when you get to the place where you can't hear something about yourself that's true, then you're in bad shape. You see that? You're in bad shape. So here, and, and that is what high-minded is. When you think above, you when you think of yourself more than what you should, when you think of yourself more, and what does that mean? That you always right. You're always right. Nobody can tell you anything. You just hard-hearted. You're stiff-necked. Don't want to be corrected. That's that's high mindedness there, you know, because for you to for you to re reject correction means that you have to think that you're more than what you really are. You see that? And that's just automatic. And so it says ye stiff necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears. Ye do always resist who the Holy Ghost. Was the Holy Ghost coming down preaching? Yeah. In a way, how was he preaching in men? Men that had the Holy Ghost, they would speak what God would give them to say. And the stiff-necked, hard-hearted, and dull of hearing ears would reject what the Holy Ghost was saying. And I'm glad that the Lord put it in here like this. It's the Holy Spirit that preaches to you. When people send emails or whatever and I respond, it's the Holy Spirit that, that's responding to you. Now, 
You wouldn't get offended at the word if you wasn't coming up short on it. You see that? If, if somebody come in my room or somebody come in my house or they passing by and I'm standing outside and they say, dog, I'm not going to turn and look. I'm not going to answer to it. I'm not going to get offended because I know that I'm not a dog. I have a name and that's what I answer to, you see. And so the only time people get offended is when what I call the word is finding them. Now, I tell you, that's not the time to get offended. That's the time to say, you know what, God? That wasn't easy to hear, but that's me. That, that I need to grow in that area. That's the time to surrender to the Lord, not to fight against him, not to resist what the Holy Spirit is saying, you see. He says, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Why? Because Why did he say that? Because they were always talking about how they wouldn't be like their forefathers who killed the prophets. And sometimes people think that, well, you know, I'm nothing like my mother. I'm nothing like my father. I'm, I'm going to be this way, except you're exactly like that. If you're not surrendered to God, your heavenly father, you're going to constantly be like your earthly parents. You might not, you know, you might not even like what you saw in them, but you'll be, you'll be that if you don't surrender to the Lord, you see. All right, let's go and keep reading verse 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disp disposition of angels and have not kept it. So these people that persecute, these people that think they're right, they, they're not living a life of righteousness. They'll argue with you back and forth, and it's really so that they can hold on to the sin in their lives. You see that? If God says it in his word, it, he means for you to live by it. And he don't use and he don't want to hear the excuse of, oh, that's too much. Or, I feel like Brother Bolden is preaching, you know, just things above my head. It's not above your head. You can obey it. The Bible says God's commandments are not burdensome. They're not grievous. Especially not when you have love and not when you love God. You see that? Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Translation, offended. You see that? And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Grown people. <laughs> Grown people biting on this man. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus on the standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of God standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. And that's what people do when they, you know, <clears throat> for you to attack a true prophet or a true minister of the Lord, you have to stop up your ears. In other words, you have stopped listening. And, and I'm going to tell you, that's where you stop growing at. And that's where you stop hearing from God at. Please don't think for one minute that you're going to reject God's prophet and then still hear from God. It is impossible. If, if you not saying that you need a prophet to hear from God, but if God is going to talk to you directly, he's also you also receive the ones that he sent to you. You see that? So let's go and keep reading. Verse 57, then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, <clears throat> and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. You see that? Now, if you read that carefully, you'll see that, that Stephen didn't feel the sting of death. The Bible says he fell asleep. It don't mean that, that don't mean he was killed. He, he, he fell asleep. God took him, in other words, before the sting of death came. And so, and that's the way it'll be. You know, the, when people persecute God's prophets, they don't feel that sting. You're wasting your time trying to sting them. 
that they don't feel it. They just keep going, and, and that's what infuriates people so much. God gives us, he told, he told God told Jeremiah and Ezekiel, I'm going to make your forehead hard against people. It's going to be hard like flint. You know what he meant when he said that? That he gives them the personality that it takes to withstand the blows of people. That God's prophets don't care about what you think about them. You can't control them with your manipulation and how you think they're wrong and how you think they need to be. They're not, they don't seen all that already. They've already been through all of that already. God have made them hard enough to be able to tell you what thus said the Lord is and then go on about their business. They ain't, they're not concerned with what you think and all that witchcraft you try to spin around on them. That, that you, not, you can't control God's ministers that way. God have made them, created them to be able to withstand the blows of people of that, that, that are hard-hearted and stiff-necked. God have made them to be able, and, and people, when, when they come against those prophets like that and they see that it's not bothering them, they, they can get upset about it. You know, that because the prophet ain't dancing to their tune. And of course, that's not God's will. So verse chapter one, uh, chapter eight, verse one, of the book of Acts says, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men <clears throat> carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. So now let's go to chapter 9 of the book of Acts. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Now, Saul said that he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee that other Pharisees looked up to. He was ab going above and beyond what he believed. Verse 2, and desires of him, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. Now, Jesus said, one of the last things Jesus told his disciples before he left his earth, he said, there are going to be people that persecute you, that kill you, that do all manner of evil against you for my sake. And they're going to think that they'll be doing God a favor. In other words, what is he saying? They're going to be so some people that are so convinced that they're really following the Lord. That if you just look at the fruit of what they're doing. You'll you'll know whether or not they're really following me. You see that God didn't tell Saul to kill anybody. God didn't tell Saul to, to throw men and, and women in jail. He was doing this because he thought he was right. He was one of those people that thought he was doing God a favor. Now, what that shows is this, that it, even as right as he thought he was, he was still wrong. You can be sincere in something. I mean, you can really, really believe I'm right. And can believe you're right because you believe that you're right. And still be wrong. You see that? Does it line up with God's word? Does it that, that's that, that that's what you that's your that's your measuring stick there. God's word. It doesn't matter what vessel the word is being preached through. The it, it, are you lining up with God's word? No, if you if not, then you know that you're the one that's off, not everybody else. You're the one that's off. You see that? You can really, how many of you have ever thought that something was right? 
And you were you were almost willing to lay down your life for that fact. You you would have bet your house, you'd have bet your car that you thought it was right. But why? Because a seed had been planted in you some years before. You know, maybe you were told something, and you thought because the this, the particular person that told you, or you thought because you read it, maybe you read it wrong. I don't know. But you you would have bet anything that you were right, only to come to find out that eventually that you were wrong. And then you think in your mind, well, where did I miss it at? What was it? A seed was planted. Now, you can be told something. I want you to think about something. There's some of you, you know your first name. And you, you, you know your first name because somebody told you some time ago, years ago, when you were little, that was your name. And so you learned the answer to that name. But what if somebody came and told you, you know, that's not your first name. That's really your middle name. Your first name is this. We just called you that because we liked your middle name better. And maybe you don't have your birth certificate there with you. Maybe you've never seen your birth certificate. But then you go, you go look at it and find out, hey, that's right. Well, what was it that made you think that what you were being called was your first name? The fact that you accepted it years ago. And that was just truth to you. And what happens a lot of times, what gets people thrown off is because they have had a seed planted in them and they have accepted that as truth. And then when somebody come along and tell them, no, that's not what the word says. This is what the word say. They have a hard time letting go of what the lie that they have held on to for so many years. And that's the reason why so many people have an issue with admitting that they are wrong. Is because they have to go back and 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 undo that lie that they accepted many years ago. They don't want to believe that just maybe the devil had me deceived all of these years. Just maybe, you think about it, people that don't have right relationships with different people. And you get into these different relationships, and I mean parental relationships with your children, with your parents, with friends, and... All of those relationships are hurting. And you've convinced yourself, well, it's all of them. They're all against me. And then somebody come along and tell you, no, it's not them, it's you. You're the one. You're sour. You're bitter. You need to give up that hatred. You need to forgive. Well, for them to accept that, they have to go back and they have to check every relationship that went bad. And they'd have to come to the conclusion, hey, I played a part in this. Hey, I need to ask for forgiveness. But a lot of times people aren't willing to do that because they're not willing to go back and look and, and you know, they, so they don't want to accept that they're wrong presently because that means they would have to go back a few years and look over their lives and see what else they've been wrong about. And people don't want to do that. They just rather hold on to that horse They'd rather hold on to the fact that they think that they're right instead of humbling themselves and admitting, you know, maybe I'm the reason for the turmoil in my life. Maybe I'm the reason, you know, that all of these issues that I, I can't get along with people. Some of you, and I'm going to say this because the Lord is telling me to say it. Some of you have anxiety issues. Because you won't receive what God is saying. Because you won't admit you're wrong. And so when you are around people, you get anxious. You can feel that attack coming on. Because you won't receive the fact that maybe it's you. It's not the people around you that brings on that anxiety. It's you. It's something on the inside of you. And the Lord will heal that. If you will receive the fact that just maybe you were the one, maybe you're wrong. If you will receive that you're the one that's wrong. You're the one that's, that's ruining relationships. You're the one that's sabotaging relationships. That's the, and so when you don't receive that, you get all of these things built up on the inside of you. And it shows up in the form of anxiety. Some of you, 
you want you want the Lord to heal you? Some of you, you even ask me to pray for you. And, and the Lord will let me know, don't pray for them. I've been standing in some of y'all's presence when you've asked me to pray for you. And I, I won't do it. You know why? Because things in your heart is not right. And, and my prayer, God won't hear my prayer. It doesn't matter how righteous I am. It doesn't matter how much faith you think you have. God won't hear my prayer concerning what you want relief from as long as your heart is not right. And I'm just one of those people, if I know that, I'm not going to waste my breath. When God puts something on me not to do, I'm not going to do it. Who am I? I? I can't fight against God. I don't have any healing power. God does. You holding on to pride and stubbornness, that's your biggest enemy. Your pride is your biggest. The, the devil isn't your enemy. You are. That's, that's your biggest enemy. Why? Because that pride keeps you from realizing where you are. And since you don't know where you are, you don't know how much you need to grow. Uh, maybe don't even realize that you need to grow. And that's not God's will, you see. And so, verse 4 says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? You see that? Now, but then he thought, before this, he thought he knew God. And so when the Lord comes to him, he tells him, you persecute me. In other words, God is saying, let me give you the right perspective of this, Saul. Those people you throwing in prison, that's not against them. Those people that you, I'm talking to you that's watching now, you that's listening in, you, the people that you call yourself persecuting, that's not against them. You're really persecuting the Lord. If these people that you're persecuting belong to God, you're not persecuting them. That's the reason why it just rubbed, it just rolled off of our backs. We don't, we're not bothered by that. It's really God. It, your tainted relationship with God is what got you persecuting his people. And so it's really God that you're against, not his people. You see that? And so when God comes to him this way, why are you persecuting me? He asks, who are you? In other words, I thought I knew you. I thought you were the one who I've been working for all this time. And look at what he says. And the Lord says, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. In other words, to go against your conscience. Verse 6, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. You see that? Now, I love that Saul went from being a foot soldier for the devil to saying, okay, God, I've been getting it all wrong. God stopped Saul in his tracks. You see that? Stopped him in his tracks to let him know you've had it wrong. And Saul being stopped in his tracks admitted, hey, I've been wrong. Okay, God, now that I know that I've been persecuting you and I've been coming against you, what will you have me to do? In other words, how can I change this situation? So when God brings something to your attention, when God got Saul's attention, Saul didn't say, well, you know what? Even though I've been wrong, I'm going to keep going because there's too many people who respect me. I got my place in the Pharisees. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I'm a high-ranking official, official, and I'm just going to keep going with this. I got to keep rolling with it now. I can't stop. So I said, you know what? You're right. Okay, I accept that. Now what will you have me to do? Uh, in other words, I want to be on the right side. In other words, Saul was willing to admit his wrong. So, if you have your Bibles again, let's go to the first chapter of 1 Timothy. First chapter of 1 uh, Timothy, we're going to read verse 16, just real briefly. Uh, well, actually, we're going to start reading verse 12 and 13. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. In other words, what is he saying? God counted me faithful. How? He knew that with the same strength 
that I was a driving force to carry out the devil's will, that I would use that same strength to carry out his will. And that should be your mindset. If, you, if you've been wrong in something, as, as loud as you were yelling when you were wrong, at, you know, as loud as you were yelling when you were persecuting the saints of God, you need to be just as loud when you say, you know what, I was wrong and I've turned a new leaf. I was wrong in what I was saying. I was wrong in what I was believing. I was wrong in what I was doing. But thanks be to God that he has counted me worthy to correct me. And now I'm on the right path. Be just as loud. Don't be loud when you're wrong and then whispering when you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to turn a new leaf or when you're changing. Have you really changed if you're whispering about it? No, be just as loud. You see that? So let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Why? Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And that's what the Lord is saying there. God can help you if you will admit you're wrong, because some of you, you're, you're wrong, sincerely wrong. In other words, you're sincere in what you believe, and God will help you if you are humble enough to turn. You say that he'll help you if you're humble enough. What a lot of people do is in ignorance and unbelief. But I'm telling you, when God have come to you to correct you, if you keep going down that path, it's not in ignorance. Nobody had ever preached to Paul. And when Paul did hear the preaching of Stephen, you know what he did? That's what pricked his heart. That's why the Lord told him it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, it's hard for you to go against your conscience. You've heard my servant preach and that's been eating at you. And so from there, he was converted. You see that? But when you hear God's word and God is speaking directly to you and you're still turning it down, th there's no more sacrifice for that. You don't have sacrifice for that sin. You're not ignorant anymore. You, you, and, and so you don't get a pass the way that Saul got it. You see that? Saul got a pass because he was doing what he was doing in ignorance and unbelief. But when God sends his minister to you to point out, no, that's not the way it's to be done. You have to be it this way. And you still reject it. You, now you're accountable. You're not, you're no longer ignorant. You're accountable. You are purposely going against God. And now you've set your face against him. And that's not God's will. Admit when you, when God brings something to your attention, you admit it, confess it. You see that? Confess your faults. Confess that you're wrong. And then God can help you. Amen. So we want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you. And we look forward to sharing more of God's word with you. Have a blessed day.